I'm creating an access database to use for tracking student enrollments at my college. Now that I've created the curriculum, enrollments, and students tables, I need to set the relationships between them. I want to make sure that the data in these tables stays accurate and complete and is easy to combine with the data in the other tables. I've ensured that my data is accurate and complete by setting up relationships between these tables. This diagram shows the relationships between the tables. Setting a relationship between these tables has three advantages. First, by not putting all my data in just one table, I've eliminated the risk of introducing data entry errors when I add records. Here, if I were to use just one table, you can see how I could misspell a student's name. In the last record, an N and an I are transposed. I can ensure accuracy by entering data that's used multiple times just once as a single record in one table and then relating that record to records in other tables. Once I've entered these names, I'll probably never have to type them again. This is the students table. The numeric ID field, 1, 2, and so on, is used by the enrollments table to refer to these students. For example, to enroll a student in a particular class, I find the student's name in the students table, and then I just have to take the data from the student ID field of that table the data from the course field in the curriculum table of the courses the student will take, and then add that data as new records in the enrollments table. Since the enrollments table is related to the curriculum table by the course number field and also related to the students table by the student ID field, each record in the enrollments table is related to a record in the students and curriculum tables. By relating the records from these tables, I can make sure the data is accurate by adding the data only once. The second advantage is that I can prevent mistakes, like enrolling the same student twice in the same class. The enrollments table is set up so that a student can be enrolled only once in any given class. If I try to add the same student to the same class again, I get an error message. Finally, the third advantage is that updating data is easier when the tables are related. For example, if a student drops out of my college, I just have to delete the student record from the students table, and the related records in the enrollments table are also deleted. Unrelated data in other tables are not affected. Now that I've shown you the advantages of using relationships, here's how I set up the relationships in Access. I'll first set up a relationship between the curriculum and enrollments tables. To set up the relationships, I start by clicking the Database Tools tab. In the Show Hide group, I click Relationships. In order to set up the table relationships, I'll need to see all three tables. To show the tables, I click Show Table in the Relationships group. In the Show Table dialog box, I double-click each table name, and then click Close. To set up a relationship, each table must have at least one field in common with the other table. So the first thing I'll do is see if the tables have common fields between them. The students table contains one record for each student. Each record has a field containing a number that uniquely identifies each student, the student ID field. The curriculum table contains one record for each course. Just like the students table, each record in this table has a field that uniquely identifies each course, the course number field. The enrollments table connects the other tables through common values. I can only enter values in the course number and student ID fields that match existing values in the similar fields in the students and curriculum tables. The enrollments and curriculum tables have the course number field in common while the enrollments and students tables have the student ID field in common. First, I'll set up the relationship between the enrollments and curriculum tables. I drag the course number field from the curriculum table to the course number field in the enrollments table. When I release the mouse button, the Edit Relationships dialog box appears. To make sure that each record in the enrollments table is always related to a record in the curriculum table, I will choose to enforce referential integrity. Referential integrity means that if I try to add a new record to the enrollments table that is not related to a record in the students or curriculum tables, Access will display an error and it won't let me add that record. With referential integrity enabled, 
Access makes sure that the data in a table is related to the appropriate data in other tables. Since I want consistent records in both tables, I'll enable referential integrity. With referential integrity enabled, I can only add records whose values correspond to the values of existing records in the other table. Now that I have this option enabled, I can let Access do the updating itself. There are a number of ways that records in a table can be changed. One way is if someone changes the data in one or more fields, and another way is if someone deletes an entire record. To let Access do the updating when someone changes a record in a table that shares a relationship with other tables, I click Cascade Update Related Fields. Enabling this option means that Access automatically updates all related tables when a record is updated, such as if the course number of a class changes. When a course number is changed in the curriculum table, Access automatically updates related records in the enrollments table because the tables have a relationship. To let Access do the updating when someone deletes a record in a table, I click Cascade Delete Related Records. With this option, Access automatically deletes certain records in a related table if a record is deleted, like when we cancel a class due to low interest in it. When we cancel a class due to lack of interest, the record for that class is deleted from the curriculum table. The records that referred to that class in the enrollments table are also deleted. To finish creating the relationship, I click Create. OK, I've created the first relationship, the one between the curriculum and the enrollments tables. To create a relationship between the students and curriculum tables, I follow the same general process. Now that I've completed setting the relationships between the three tables, I know my data will always be up-to-date and accurate.